Hey guys, welcome to another essential tutorial. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can simulate blowing snow uh, using 3ds Max, Tyflow, Embergen, and USD Composer, uh, which was formerly NVIDIA Omniverse Create. So to get started here in 3ds Max, we're gonna create a simple plane and I'm gonna use a noise modifier in order to add some of this turbulence uh, on the plane. So let's kind of rotate it here in our scene as I kind of wanna have this sloping hill effect and I'm just gonna kind of position it um, in our scene uh, as so. Now, to get started with creating the rocks, we're gonna actually use a tie flow simulation and then we're gonna bake it out. So let's open up the editor and the very first operator we're gonna use is a birth operator and we're gonna disable the end amount and we wanna just have a total amount of particles around 150. Uh, let's set the display to geometry and let's create a position object operator so that we can position those particles on the ground plane. Now, I'm gonna set the display to white just so we can see those particles in our scene a little bit better here. And lastly, I'm gonna add a shape operator. Now under that shape operator, we wanna change the settings here to 3D. And then we wanna set it to something like chunks round. And I'm gonna to wanna to increase the scale here so that we can see those rocks uh, a bit larger on our object. So let's set it to something like 1500. And you can always tweak the amount of rocks going to the particles uh, setting. So let's create a tie mesher here. And under the tie mesher, we wanna set it from blob mesh to input geometry. And let's select that tie flow object. And underneath, we're going to just simply hit Extract Mesh. And that's going to bake that tie flow mesh down for us so that we can actually edit it as normal geometry. So if I select the geometry here, you can see that it is indeed a editable mesh. So let's rename this object here. Let's call it Rocks. And while we're at it, let's just rename our plane as well to Ground Plane. And moving on here. So we're, we got our first one. Let's create now our second tie flow simulation. And this is going to be the actual snow particles the particles that fly across our plane, interact with the rocks and blow around. So uh, to get started here for our second tie flow simulation, we're gonna need a plane object and this is gonna be the object that emits particles within our tie flow simulation. So let's lower down the segments, dump something to like four by four. And because I'm gonna be using a texture to generate those particles, let's go ahead and load in a bitmap. So this bitmap here was just something from Unsplash, was just some waves which I converted into a black and white image. And I just had it linked into a physical material in the base uh, weight and base color here. And then I applied it to the plane. Now you can see by default when I apply it to the plane, the UVs are not correct. So let's go ahead and fix that um, now. So let's go ahead in the UV map settings. Let's rotate um, the gizmo here, scale it up, center it into position, and let's convert it back into editable poly so it saves down that UV map. Uh, now in the bitmap here, I'm gonna want to uh, extend my tie frame to something like 500. And I'm just gonna simply animate the V channel in the offset so that we can get this animated uh, offset in our texture. So once this is set up, I'll show you how we can actually input this into tie flow later on. But now that's set up, let's just leave it on the side for now. So let's go ahead and create the actual main part of the simulation. So we're gonna need a birth operator. And I'm gonna set my particles to something like 20,000, and we want to have them occurring over each frame. So we're also going to want a position object operator, and let's position it over the ground plane, and set the color to something like orange. Actually, my mistake, we're going to want to have this generate off the earth plane we just created. So let's set that now. You can see as I scrub through that it's generating particles per frame. Let's also create a force operator, move that down, and let's change some of the settings here. Let's have it move in the positive Y direction with a strength of something like 0.1. And let's have some built-in noise set with a strength of like 0.4, uh, frequency of one, scale of one, uh, using the Perlin uh, settings here. So as I scrub through, you can see that nothing's really happening. It's kind of going through our ground object. So we're gonna wanna use a collision operator in order to have it actually collide with the ground. And as I input that into the collision things, you can see that now that is colliding as expected. So what do we want to do here is we want to have a object bind operator and we want to have it so that when these particles collide with this ground, they're going to move into this next event and actually bind to the surface. So let's set it to lock to surface and snap to surface, set the friction to zero so that these particles are just kind of gliding across the surface, but they're snapping to the surface. Uh, I'm going to also use a limit offset and I'm going to set the minimum and maximum to 10 by 10 with a variation of something like 90. And you can see that actually just kind of pushes these particles off the ground and kind of has them has them floating a bit over the surface and gives a bit of offset. So it acts like blowing snow actually would, is that it doesn't 
stick to the ground per se just kind of glides over top of it as the wind is pushing them. So let's also add a collision operator here as well. And we want to have it collide with the rocks this time. Now, the reason why is because when it collides with it, we want to have it move into a third event. And in that third event, we're going to actually have it spawn new particles. So let's set the bounce to five and the friction to 70 so that it kind of sticks to these rocks a little bit. And that looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and create that spawn operator right now. So as this collides with the rocks, we want it to spawn and we want to have it spawn five new particles. Give it a bit of variation so that it's uh, a bit of variety in the amount that it's spawning. And also the velo velocity, we want to have some variation in that speed as well. Let's copy over that force so that in this third event, there is still wind, be applying, wind being applied to the rock particles that are spawned. That looks pretty good. But again, they're not colliding with anything. So let's add a collision so that those spawn particles actually continue to collide with the rocks and the ground plane. And let's add those in. So we want to have it collide with the rocks and we want to have it collide with the ground plane. And let's set the absolute radius. And before I do that, I just want to change these colors here so it's a bit easier to see. Change it to geometry in the display. And so let's, under the absolute radius and the collision, let's set it to one. And let's set that bounce to five and the friction to something like 70. Okay, cool. So as I scrub through here, you can see that now the spawned particles are interacting with the rest of the rocks and the ground plane as expected. As I'm playing through here, you can see that they're colliding with the rocks, they're kind of sticking to them. And then as they kind of overcome the edge of the rock, they're continuing to blow across the surface, which is what we want. So just to do a bit of a cleanup here, let's add a property test and we want to have a positive test in the Y position. The reason why is because after these particles get too far off screen, we don't need to see them anymore. So we're going to just clean them up just so that we can reduce the amount of simulation time. So you can see that I set the positive uh, position in Y to 200, but maybe we need to increase it to 400. So once it gets past 400 in the Y position, it's just going to simply pass on to the delete event and it'll just clean up those particles for us. Again, that's just to help us simulate more particles without needing the unnecessary overhead. It's just generally a good idea to have these kind of events in there in order to make your workflow faster. So that looks pretty good to me. Um, now what you'd normally do is you'd render this out in V-Ray, but I'm going to show you guys how we can actually bring this into NVIDIA Omniverse USD Composer. So I'm just going to tweak some of these settings a little bit. And that looks pretty good. So as I was mentioning before, I actually want to have these birth out of the texture. We don't want to just have it randomly uh, distribute over this uh, birth plane. So what we can do is under the position object, if we go density by texture, it's actually going to spawn particles based on the white values of our texture map. So let's load in that wave file from that map that we animated. And I'm just going to just drop in this temporary operator. And I just want to have it delete all particles that are over the age of one. The reason being is that if I crank this up, this is just to illustrate for you guys what's actually happening. So with this new uh, particle age event, you can see that if I increase the birth amount of these particles to something super high, to something like 5 million or something like that, you're going to see that as these particles are spawning, um, the white areas of this texture map are going to be where those particles spawn. And so this is just kind of having a bit of variety and kind of giving more of a natural feel to how snow actually is, you know, generated in real life, um, that it's not uniformly just kind of blowing across, that it kind of, the wind moves in these kind of various patterns uh, across different uh, topology of land. So this looks a bit better to me. It's just, again, adding some natural variation. Um, and you can always play around with the animation speed of the texture. Um, but yeah, lots of ways to, to add variety. So if you were to render this in V-Ray or Redshift or something like that, you'd want to go ahead and create a shape of giving these snow particles like a sphere or something like that. And you're going to also want to have like a mesh operator so you can actually render this out in 3ds Max. But we're not doing that. We're going to actually export this as a USD for rendering out in NVIDIA Omniverse. So let's go ahead and disable those shape operators for now. And I'm going to show you how we can export this for Omniverse. So we're going to actually use an export particles operator. And I'm going to set it to Olympic Point Cloud. And I want to keep it in the Houdini format and keep all these channels the same. So let's give it a name and keep it in the YOP orientation and just hit, simply hit generate Alembic file. So I'm also going to create a snow covering object, which will also get exported as USD. But let me show you how we create it first. 
So we're going to need a plane, and I want to have that plane being fed into our Typhlo simulation. So let's go ahead and create a birth, op uh, birth operator. And let's set the amount of particles to something super high, like 100,000, and a position object operator so that we can position those particles on this plane that we just created. Then we're also going to want a force because we're going to want gravity to push those particles down. We're going to be using the time measure to blob mesh this out, so you'll see why this is uh, makes sense in a moment here. So let's have them collide with the rocks and have it collide with the plane object. Set the bounce to zero and set the friction to 100 because we want these particles to land and stick exactly where they uh, hit or where there's a collision detected. So let's set the particle display to geometry and with the color of white just so we can see it easier in our viewport. And I'm going to just do some, uh, again, clean up here just for unnecessary simulation time. I'm going to set the position test in the position of uh, z-axis and I'm just going to have it that if the particles get too far down in the z-axis they are deleted so that once they go off screen we no longer need them and they're no longer part of our simulation. Uh, I'm also going to have this collision when it does collide with something we want those particles to immediately stop and pass on to the next event. So in the time measure object we're going to select that tie flow uh, simulation and I'm going to have them as a blob mesh. Then we can use a tie relax modifier in order to relax these blob mesh geometry. You can see where this is going here. So once I crank up the amount of particles to something like 900,000, uh, it's just going to give us some really ge a smooth geometry that uh, mimics snow covering our object. Now in this case, I actually want it to match the wind position that's happening. So I actually want to angle down this plane a little bit. And I want to have it so that the snow particles kind of fly in more at like a 45 degree angle rather than directly down. And that'll just provide some more natural snow cover from where the wind is blowing. And so if I re-simulate it here, you can see that it's covering a bit more of the front edges of those rocks, and that looks a little bit better to me. So let's go ahead and uh, turn off this tie relax modifier for now. And under the tie measure, let's go ahead and change some of these radius settings to like five by one with a variation of maybe like 15. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bake this out. So let's hit extract mesh, and then we can go ahead and disable our tie measure and even the original tie flow modifier. But for now, let's go ahead and copy that tie relax modifier and we're gonna paste it over that baked out tie measure object. So let's disable the tie flow, disable the plane, and we're gonna rename this snow cover so we can find it easier uh, later on. Let's uh, go ahead and export this as a USD as we did with the other um, model here. And I wanna keep this as a current uh, time since we're just exporting a still frame so we don't need extra data and just leave the default settings the same. So I'm gonna export also the rocks Keep it the same, and then also the ground plane. And in a moment here, I'll take you through how we can set this up in NVIDIA Omniverse. And first things first though, I'm gonna show you how we can do Embergen and set up our VDB simulation. So let's just, uh, before we go into Embergen, what I wanna do is actually decimate this mesh because we're gonna be using it as a collision mesh within Embergen. So using the Pro Optimizer modifier and setting the vertex percentage down to like something like 2%, um, we're gonna export this as an Alembic file and I'll show you how we can import this model into Embergen uh, for use in our VDB smoke simulation. So in Embergen, let's go ahead and use a preset here. And I'm gonna be using this Steam manhole preset. And I'm gonna show you how we uh, can import our model we just did from 3ds Max. Right click and create an import node. And we wanna set the import to that uh, Alembic file we just created. Uh, you want to set the master scale to something like 0.1 and then i'm going to go ahead and link this up to the shapes and we can delete this original torus object that was in the preset um, let's go ahead and adjust some values here in the simulation we want to adjust the voxel count a little bit let's apply that um, and this is just so that we can speed up the amount of uh, simulation time we don't need to have this uh, detailed of a simulation uh, for this vdbs so i'm going to go ahead and move the imported uh, Alembic file here, and I'm going to reduce the smoke percentage in our emitter. And then I'm also going to just readjust this force line. This is the force direction that the wind is going to be blowing. So just kind of angle it a bit up here. I'm going to reduce the temperature, increase the emission gradient, and I'm just going to start to increase the push amount so that it starts to push the smoke uh, up the mountain a little bit. Um, so I'm going to want to reduce this scale, overall scale, the amplitude a little bit. And under the simulation, I'm gonna just play around with these voxels a little bit. I'm just gonna to start to increase it in the X amount just so that we can cover more of this mountain. 
So that's pretty good to me. Uh, let's disable some of these un unused horses. And I'm going to have a collider because you can see that the smoke is actually passing through the ground here, which we don't want. So using a collider node, we can just simply link in that Alembic file and link it into the colliders portion of the simulation. Cool. So that looks pretty good. Uh, let's increase the voxel amount in the X direction, just so that again, we can cover up more of this mountain so that it's evenly uh, generating smoke. And then I'm just going to go to the force noise and I just want to lower the amplitude to something like 24 and the scale to something like seven. Finally, let's just kind of continue to reduce the smoke percentage in the emitter and just kind of tweak these emission gradient uh, and temperature settings. And that should give us roughly the look that we want. I don't want it to be too dense because I don't want this to actually look like burning smoke. I want it just to kind of look like um, the haze you get when you have tiny uh, snow particles kind of clumping together in the air. So once you're happy with the, your final look, you're going to create a export VDB uh, node and you're going to link in the from the volume processing link the VDB to the VDB and then you're going to want to give it a directory name and a file name and then you're going to set the number of frames which in our case it's 500 total and then hit export now. So that was it for Embergen. Now let's bring it all together in NVIDIA Omniverse Create. So just to do some uh, basic cleanup here let's start with creating a cube and the very first thing we're going to start with is bringing in that Embergen uh, sequence. So let's create a material on this called uh, volume density. And I'm going to load in the one of the frames here. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to change this in a moment. We're going to want to change the density scale to something like 500. Set it to in RTX Interactive. And you want to make sure to have non-uniform volumes enabled. Uh, so now under the cube, we're going to set the scale to something like 10 by 10 by 10. And we're going to set the rotate 90 degrees. And there is our smoke scene. Now the thing is, we're going to have to animate this VDB sequence, right? So um, out of the box right now, currently with uh, NVIDIA Omniverse Crate, um, you're not going to be able to animate the VDBs out of the box. You have to do some uh, tinkering with code. Now I'll share this code with you. Um, and I'll also link the original tutorial that I saw this through. Um, and so it was, goes into a lot more detail than, than what I'm doing right now. But basically you're going to want to save it out as a USDA. And then you're going to want to change out this portion of the VDB so that we can create uh, a reference where it loads in a unique VDB per frame. So we're just gonna paste in that code here. Then we're gonna wanna make sure our script uh, extension is enabled in NVIDIA Omniverse Crate. And then we're simply going to go window, script editor, and I will link this script in the description below. But basically what it's doing is it's doing a bit of Python where it is linking to a directory. It's going through each of the files within that and it's just gonna spit out a text file, which we can then easily copy and paste into our USDA edit uh, file. So under that, we're gonna just paste all of these uh, references within this code. And uh, you don't have to know too much about it, but basically for each frame, it's gonna load in the corresponding frame of our VDB file. And so if I save that out and then reload it, as I scrub through the timeline, you're gonna see that each one of these frames corresponds to the name of the BDB object. And that's behaving as expected. Now you're gonna have to extend your timeline to 500 frames as that is the amount of BDB uh, files we have in our sequence. But then we can go ahead and now load in the rest of the objects we exported from 3ds Max. So let's load in a ground plane, let's load in the rocks, and let's also load in the snow particles that we exported out of uh, TIEFLOW. And also the snow cover object as well. So the cool thing about um, exporting these particles as alembics out of TIEFLOW is that it's really low weight. Um, what's cool about NVIDIA Omniverse Crate is it automatically creates these spheres uh, on top of those particle points. So it just keeps our file size down a huge amount as we don't have to export a ton of mesh geometry onto it. And you're gonna see though that they're very large. So I'm gonna fix that in a moment here. So let's kind of reposition everything in our scene. I'm going to disable the skylight and I just want to reposition the distance light here so that we can get more of an interesting dynamic uh, lighting setup here. Let's go ahead and enable motion blur and under the path tracing I want to enable global volumetric effects and under common we want to also enable global uh, volumetric effects and set the density multiplier to something like 0.2. So under the uh, materials let's go ahead and also apply this material to the snow cover um, just so we get that white snow color, apply it to the particles. Under the rock, we're going to find a stone material here. 
using dry bright stone. And under the ground plane, we can use the same texture. We won't see it really. It's just uh, to kind of cover any light emitting from, uh, from the bottom. So just disabling everything, we can just quickly adjust the lighting just so we get a bit uh, more accurate read on what's happening in our scene. And uh, as I mentioned, we're going to now change the size of those snow particles as by default, they come in way too big. So in Tie Flow, if we go back to 3ds Max, we open the editor, you're going to want to have a scale operator. And what the scale operator is going to do is it's going to set the scale of our particles, which will be read by those geoprims within NVIDIA Omniverse for the actual size. So let's set them to something like eight, and then let's re-export that uh, Alembic file. And now when we save and reopen our scene, you're going to see that those snow, snow particles have been resized correctly. So you might not see it uh, as easily on your screen here, but they are there. They're just much smaller, and that's what we want. We just want to add that little detail element. Uh, and with motion blur, it's going to make your scene look all that much more realistic. So once you're happy with this, you can go ahead and set the uh, render settings. If you want to go ahead and capture this out, set a path directory and an output name, and simply hit capture sequence. And that's all I had to do.